Hello and welcome back. As I said before, this is Icy Cup Railcoon here for Icy Cup TV. Kiwi Kaki has taken an early lead in this series, and he has just come charging straight into Arlock's base. Those are some nice force fields by Arlock, but this army differential is so huge, it's going to be really tough for him to fight his way back in, even with those excellent force fields. Kiwi Kaki just has to pull back, reinforce a little bit. Arlock has to pull all of his probes, so he's losing probes here just to make sure he can stay in this game, but Kiwi Kaki warps in a bunch more stalk bunch more stalkers excuse me and uh he's still ahead in his army count but he's got to be careful because arlock did chip away at the uh supply count there of kiwikaki a little bit with those nice force fields but if you look at the sentries of uh arlock he doesn't have that much energy he has exactly three force fields so he's gonna have to use those very very wisely and it is going to be tough though because Kiwikaki's ahead in uh, at the economic game right now. He has way more probes, uh, especially after Arlock lost those right now. So even if he can keep Kiwikaki out of his base, it would be really hard for him to counterattack because of the fact that by the time he can walk all the way across this big map, Kiwikaki would have been able to warp in more units at his base to defend. So at this point, this game is almost over. Um, we're really just seeing some positioning back and forth as the two players are just being really careful. Ki Kiwi doesn't want to move in and get super aggressive, make make some sort of mistake, and allow his opponent to completely raffle stomp his army, which is the only thing that would give uh, Arlok a way back into this game. But Arlok really doesn't have the staying power here to move out of this choke point. He, he can sort of move up and scare Kiwi a little bit, but he has to pull back every time because this really narrow choke point is the key, as both players will be trying to force feel that and chop each other's armies. So I'm not entirely sure what Arlok is planning to accomplish here with these rocks. Yes, of course, he could sneak out and go for a quick attack on Kiwi Kaki's base, but most likely Kiwi's response would be just to, uh, you know, run a probe away and plant a pile on and then kill his opponent's base faster, as he does have a bigger army, but I do like how Arlok is uh, using these force fields to keep his opponent out, but now he's pretty much out of force fields. Uh, like I said, he did not have a cybernetic score for quite a long time, and Arlok, realizing that he doesn't have any more force fields, can't really take that extra step and go and try and harass his opponent, because if he does, he knows that he's just going to lose his base. So uh, he sends those zealots out, and they are going to get force fielded and separated, and they are dead. Kiwikaki's almost over double supply of Arlok, so th this game is in kind of its final stages. We just have some positioning, some dancing left to do. Arlok is going to put up the good fight, and uh, but it does seem like Kiwikaki has this one nailed down, unless he makes some huge mistake, like just right-clicking into his opponent's army. But when we look back at Kiwi's base, he has somehow found the resources to even get uh, Colossus tech on the way. He's researching the uh, extended thermal lancers, lances, so he definitely has this game locked down. If his uh, opponent were able to scout that, he would probably just GG right now. And he does he even finds the minerals as well to plant a nexus at the high yield. He's just so far ahead and he knows it that he's been saving minerals and resources and just teching more, taking even more of an economic advantage, and he's going to take that and win. And I really like that, you know, because you're never sure if your opponent is doing something sneaky. Yes, he could win just by warping in a ton of units here at the natural. But it's just in case your opponent has hidden tech somewhere, just in case the reason why he's been stalling for this long is because he's got a Stargate somewhere or he's got DTs on the way. It's much better to be trying to come up with another plan, another way out of this game, just in case he's able to basically stall you at his, uh, his choke point forever. You need some other plan. And Colossus and an expansion are a pretty good plan here, as we have some force fields going back and forth. Uh, both players get some units trapped, but of course, uh, Arlok does not want to be trading units at this point, because Kiwi can make them much faster than he can. So, Arlok's having to spend all of his resources just to make sure he can keep warping in enough units to keep Kiwi out of his base. Well, Kiwi's even, you know, he's got the high yield up, He's got a couple of Colossus out with a third one on the way. Once these Colossus show their face, I 
gotta think that Arlok is gonna GG, and Kiwikaki's even being a little bit mean here by backing up constantly, backing up, backing up. He's letting Arlok think that he's pushing his opponent back. He must think he's the luckiest player in the world and that Kiwi doesn't have many probes, but he's gonna be quite wrong once he sees these Colossus stroll into the middle of the map. That's probably gonna be game right there. So we are just kind of waiting for Kiwikaki to show the ace up his sleeve and for Arlok to realize how screwed he is, and then we will move on to game two. Yep, here they come. Three Colossus, four Zelds strolling right into the middle of the map. Uh, pretty much as soon as he sees this, I gotta expect there's gonna be a GG. Um, he could fight it out, but I, I once he sees those Colossus, it's like, oh, damn. So it does look like he is going to put up the good fight. He's going to get murdered horribly by these Colossus, and he's going to say GG. There it is. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you tune into youtube.com slash icycuptv for more uh, videos of the Global Gamers Invitational, as uh, we're still working on the qualifiers. And once that's done, we'll have the main tournament, which, like I said earlier, has $3,600 worth of prizes on the line. So it's very exciting. Make sure you keep tuned.